Okay, we're going to show that the autocorrelation can be used to find the pitch, especially when you're talking about sounds that come from striking piano keys. And the rule we're going to follow is that the uh, first and strongest peak in the autocorrelation is related to the pitch. Now there's some background here if you're interested in it. There's a text that came out in 2013 which uses autocorrelation exclusively to determine pitch. And then most of the acousticians who do use the autocorrelation to determine pitch refer to this article back in 1951 by Linkletter. Okay, we're going to get started with the A4 key. Okay, there's a picture of the overall wave, four seconds worth. Now let's take a closer look. Okay, here is uh, 10 milliseconds of that wave, in the middle of that wave. And I'm plotting the wave in blue, and I'm over plotting a 440 hertz sine wave in black dots. And you can see a couple of things, first of all, that the 440 hertz wave pretty much mimics the overall structure of the A4 wave. So it has definitely a 440 hertz component, but it also has some higher frequency components which contribute to these little ripples in the wave. Now here, this distance here denoted by the red line, that's the uh, fundamental period which in this case would be 2.27 milliseconds. And you can intercompute the fundamental frequency from that by dividing that into 1,000 to get 440 hertz. The 1,000 is in there because it's going to be 1,000 milliseconds per second. You have to get the milliseconds converted to seconds because hertz is actually has units of reciprocal seconds. So it's just a conversion factor. Okay, now the spectrum down here for this particular wave, well actually the whole the four seconds of the wave, shows a strong first partial at 440 Hertz. I'm plotting power versus frequency and the power is plotted in decibels. The second partial at 880 is about uh, 17 dB down from the strongest partial, which is the first one. And then they drop off from there. You can also see that the partials are sharp relative to the harmonics, as I've drawn here as vertical dotted lines. And the sharpness gets stronger as the frequency increases, and that's a consequence of dispersion, which we aren't going to deal with in this presentation. Okay, let's take a look at the autocorrelation itself. We're going to calculate the autocorrelation and we're going to use the original wave up here, uh, where I'm showing just 10 milliseconds of it, and a copy of that wave, which we're going to shift in time. So it is out of phase with this original wave. And when it is going to get back in phase, when I shift it by the fundamental period, and that will be our way of finding the pitch when, these, when I shift it such that I get a strong correlation between the original and the copy. Okay, let's start out with no shifting and I'll get a autocorrelation of one because in fact, what I'm doing now, I'm multiplying across, multiplying these two waves together, each sample from this wave, I'm multiplying with that sample. Doing it again for this sample, that sample. Doing it for all the samples, and I'm adding those products up. Now, since this copy is identical to the original wave, effectively what I'm doing with no shifting is calculating the sum of the squares, which can be related to the variance, and it'll be the sum of the squares will be maximum when there's no shift. As I start to shift, I'm going to start to get some 
products that are negative because I'll have a negative sign down here maybe and a positive one up here. So I'll decrease the autocorrelation. So let's start doing that. Let's shift it. There's one shift. See it's dropped off and the, I've shifted this wave down here slightly compared to this wave up here. Let's keep shifting it. See because now I'm going to get products that are some sometimes they're going to be negative and sometimes they're going to be positive as I go along the wave here and it's going to decrease the value of the autocorrelation down to about 0.5. Keep going. Now I'm down to almost zero and that's because I now have as many products that are positive as I have negative because of the way the two waves are lined up. For example, I've got a positive here, I've got a negative up here. Continue shifting. Now, for example, I've got pretty much, let's see if I can go one more shift. No, I can't. I pretty much got a negative one though, because I've got the valleys up here lined up with the peaks. Peak, valley, valley, the peak, valley. So now it's negatively autocorrelated. Let's keep moving. You see I'm shifting the copy here. And now I'm starting to get out of phase by one fundamental period and I'm starting to get a large value of the autocorrelation. See up here I'm 2.2 milliseconds, 2.22, 2.24, 2.27. So at this point I have a maximum nearly one in the autocorrelation because I've lined up peaks with peaks. It's been shifted by 2.27 milliseconds, so this peak is not that peak. This peak actually is, matches this one over here because I've shifted it. But because they are lined up with peaks and valleys are lined up with valleys, I get a high correlation calculation of nearly one. And because of this peak location, that tells me what the pitch is. Let's keep on going. And you see it's going to repeat because pretty soon I'll be able to line it up such that I've got peaks with peaks. This peak here, for example, is this one over here. Keep on going. I'll keep on going for the whole wave. Okay, so now, having, I'm assuming I'm all done with it. First and strongest a peak, first and strongest peak occurred at 2.27 milliseconds shift. So the pitch period is therefore 2.27 milliseconds, and the pitch is 440 hertz. And the strongest peak was close to one. That's because this wave is so similar to a 440 hertz signal. So it's quite strong correlation at this point right here. Now we're going to go to the C3 wave. Four, four seconds worth that, of that wave showing. And we'll take a close look. Here's the C3. And you can see right away there's quite a bit of difference. I've plotted in black here a signal that has a, uh, a sine wave of 130.8 hertz, which is the fundamental frequency. You can see that it it has the same period as the basic wave, but there's a lot of things going on here. I've got two components here. I've got a sharp peak and a broad peak. Sharp peak, broad peak, and it repeats. Sharp, broad, sharp, and broad. So I've got something that repeats uh, every 7.64 milliseconds, but there's other higher frequency things going on. And you can see that here in the spectrum. Here's the first partial at 130 hertz. Here's the second one. But you see the second one is the strongest. The uh, first partial is down about 8 dB or maybe 7 dB from the strongest. So we've got a different situation than it was for the A4. And this second harmonic is showing up strong here because of the this appearance of this wave it right here when I got two peaks going every 
uh, 7.64 milliseconds. Okay, let's take a look at the autocorrelation for this wave. All right, once again, we've got the original wave and a copy. So, let's start shifting it. We'll start out with autocorrelation of 1. Drops off. Now I'm getting, for example, right in here, I got uh, a little peak at 3.74 milliseconds shift, which will turn out to be about half of the fundamental period. Now we're going up towards a peak, and you see I got up here 7.46 and 7.55. Seven point six, six two. Okay, there's the peak, and here's our pitch associated with that peak. So the this is the first and strongest peak, and it occurs at seven point six four milliseconds. This little peak in here occurred at three about three point seven, which is about half of that because it's associated with the strong second partial. Just like the other autocorrelation for A4, we're going to get a re repetition because we're going to be shifting this thing, the second curve here, I'm going to be shifting it out of phase from the first, uh, and it's got to come back in phase and then out of phase and so forth as we move it along. Okay, so the first and strongest peak here occurred at 7.64 milliseconds, therefore the pitch period is... 7.64 milliseconds, and the pitch is 130.8 hertz. Next and last curve is the A0 curve. I'm showing four seconds of that curve. Again, entirely different looking curve. Here's a close-up of 80 milliseconds worth, 80, mil 80 milliseconds, and I plotted a sinusoid here that has a frequency of 27.5 Hertz, which is the fundamental frequency. And also I'm plotting the period here, the fundamental period of 36.3 milliseconds. You can see there's a lot of things going on here. A lot of higher frequencies are present. And you don't really see any periodicity here. It's obvious, at least looking at this 80 millisecond window. So, take a look at the spectrum. Down here at the so-called first partial or fundamental at 27.5, my strength is down greater than 50 dB. And in fact, I don't get a really strong peak until the 11th partial at around 300 hertz. This partial here, which is the fourth one, is fairly strong. It's only about 6 dB down from the maximum. And once again, you see the inharmonicity show up because of the fact that the partials get sharp relative to the harmonics. But this is going to be a different kind of curve because I don't have any strength at the first partial or at the fundamental frequency. So let's take a look at the autocorrelation now. Here's my original curve. Here's my copy. Here's my first value of the oral correlation at zero shift at one. I'm going to start shifting it right away. A lot of peaks coming from all these higher harmonics or higher partials. A lot of peaks. But we're going to start coming in on a peak that'll be our first and strongest peak. And you can see it's coming in on 36 milliseconds. And it's coming in on a pitch of 27. Okay, 
Let's see if I can get it down on more. Okay, there's our peak at around 36.4 milliseconds. So our, then that's just the first and strongest, and that's going to tell us the pitch is around 27.5 hertz. And now we're going to go down, and we're going to repeat because we're going to get back in phase about here. Right about here is the second peak. It's not as strong as this first peak, but this is the uh, the second peak, 72, which is uh, associated with having shifted the second wave by two fundamental periods, or two pitch periods. Okay, so the first and strongest peak occurred at a shift of 36.3 milliseconds. The pitch period is therefore 36.3 milliseconds. And the pitch is 27.5. Note that the first and strongest peak was only 0.81 as compared to being nearly 1 for the A4. Okay, we looked at three waves. We've shown that the autocorrelation shifts a copy of the wave such, a, such that there is a maximum when the two waves are out of phase by the pitch period. When that happens, you can get the pitch frequency by inversion. Now, I'm not claiming this method is flawless, but it appears to be probably the best of the available methods. So, thank you for listening and watching.